key for living a healthy life. But how do you stay on top of your heart health? We're telling you that and more. This is What's Up Doc Heart Health Edition. Woo! <laughs> Our great friend Pfizer's senior medical advisor, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, is back with us to answer your question. So great to see you again, Doc. So great to be All here. Right, now let's get right into the questions. The first one is actually from Sheila. Take a look. My name is Sheila and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. My question is, at what age should you really be paying attention to your heart health and are there any tests that can help you see where you're at? Great question. I'm sure she's not the only person wondering that. Dr. Frieda, give us the deets. Well, absolutely. And thank you, Sheila, for asking that question mm -hmm. because um, heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women in the United wow. States. Wow. So that means it's never too early mm -hmm. to start taking care of your heart. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to heart health, it's really important to know that who's at risk and who's at risk? Everybody. Everybody's at risk for heart disease. There you go. Now, some people are at greater risk than other people. So who, let's talk about who they are. Mm -hmm. So if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, if you smoke, if you're not getting the activity that you really need, mm -hmm. if you're not eating a healthy diet, if you're overweight or obese, you may be at higher risk. Wow. Also, there are some risk factors that you can't really control. That'd be one of them. Women over the age of 55, a man over the age of 45. If you have a family history of early heart disease, mm -hmm. these may increase your risk. So you really want to know yes. your family history and whether or not there's early heart disease. Wow. Additionally, African Americans, Mexican Americans, American Indians, and Native Hawaiians have a higher risk for heart disease. Wow. wow. So, and Sheila asked about heart tests. So yeah, because I would want to know because I actually fit into some of those categories. Yeah. Exactly. So if you go to the doctor, your doctor's likely to do some things like listen to your heart, mm -hmm. check your blood pressure and your heart rate, okay. may also order a blood test to take a look at cholesterol and maybe some other things that your blood could tell us might um, mean that you're at risk for heart disease. Wow. And don't forget, you know, everybody's got a little bit of tech now, so there are home devices now. You can check your blood pressure, you can monitor your heart rate. These are not replacements for going to see your health care provider. Hear that? But they can help you stay on top of things. Yes. All right. Yes. So important. Well, thank you for that. We've got another question for you. This is from Maisha. Check it out. Hi, my name is Maisha. I'm from Long Beach. And I'd like to know if heart failure is hereditary. Mm, wow. I love this question, Dr. Frieda. So tell us, is this in our genes? So the short answer is yes and no. There are some rare conditions like ATTR cardiomyopathy and Marfan syndrome that may contribute to heart failure. And some more common causes such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. Got it. My okay. mother has cardiomyopathy. My dad has diabetes, so. <laughs> so here's what's Same. important. Yeah. You need to add all of these things up mm -hmm. and be sure that you're ready with your family history. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That's right. Knowing your family history is super important. So that was the yes part of it. Here's the no part of okay. it. There are some non-hereditary risk factors for developing heart failure. And they include things like alcohol and drug abuse, mm -hmm. smoking, also, infections of the heart um, can put you at risk for developing heart failure. And last but not least, there are, there are certain medications. So using them can put you mm. at risk. Okay. So when you go to talk to your doctor, you want to talk about these kind of family history, history. issues, mm -hmm. but you also want to talk about these other potential risk factors. All right, wow. this is great information. Yes. Now we have time for one more question. Let's see, let's take a look. Hi, I'm Lisi. I'm from New Jersey, and I love salt, but I heard it's bad for your heart. Is it true? And if so, what's a good healthy alternative? Oh, this is a big one. Okay, some of us like salt. Okay, Doc, let us know. So it sounds like Lisi loves the flavor that salt adds to food as well, and of course we can understand that. It's important to know that it's the sodium, which is a component of salt, which can be bad for you in large quantities. So it's important to know that it's the sodium. And why is that important? Because sodium consumption is a little harder to track, right? Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's talk about what the daily recommended dose for sodium intake is in the United States. Okay. 2,300 milligrams per day. That's about a teaspoon. Yeah. Wow. That's, oh, because it wait, hold like on. a lot of 2,300 sounds like so much, and then you no. just right, right. That's about a teaspoon. teaspoon. <laughs> right. You should so see how it's much milligrams. salt is in everything you eat. So that's what we get ready to talk about, right? So 2,300 milligrams per day is what's recommended. The average American intakes 3,400. Wow. Okay. So we're off from the start. Now, let me take a step back and say, so what does that have to do with heart disease, right? Mm -hmm. 
Basically what happens is the increase in sodium mm -hmm. can help increase your blood pressure. That makes it harder for your blood to, to pump, pump, right? Your heart to pump the blood. Mm -hmm. That over time may leave your heart too weak or too stiff to effectively pump blood. Ooh. Okay, so that's where the problem is. So, so now how do we figure out where all the sodium is so that we can manage it? Yeah. Yes, so we need to remember that salt, right, isn't the only place that sodium is. Sodium is often used or sodium derivatives are used in preservatives and other additives in mm -hmm. food. So we need to be able to track those. How do you track them? Sodium's listed on the labels. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Lisi, you gotta read the labels mm -hmm. so that you can really track how much sodium you're taking in. Yeah. And that's especially important because there's a lot of sodium in food that we eat every day. We just don't know it's yep. there. Mm -hmm. So we want to, yeah, so let's take a look at some examples of that. That looks amazing. Right, so this looks like lunch, right? I yeah. Like all of it. yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's the question. Of these three things, which one has more than half of the recommended daily intake of sodium? The soup. Uh, yeah, I would, say, I would soup. say soup too. Okay, soup sandwich. And those de the de deli slices and the soup. Okay, all three. Yes. All three have more than half. Chocolate has it too. Wow. I know. Well, let's, let's start pudding. Yeah. Don't I want this pudding right here? <laughs> so the the pudding doesn't taste salty, so you wouldn't think that salt was in there. Yeah, no. But it has sodium and sodium containing additives. Why the thickening? Mm. So you've got to read the labels because some of this stuff can sneak up on you. Yeah. What, what about, about the deli meats? Deli meats contain a lot of salt and are made with preservatives containing sodium and other additives. Preservatives. Now man. put that on the bread. Right, add yourself a little condiment, put some chips on the side, and oh. now you're kind of over the top, yeah. just mm -hmm. on that one plate. And that's yeah, like that a cheese. basic lunch. It exactly. Really and then last but not least, this is one cup of soup. This one cup of soup has over 80% of the recommended amount of sodium yeah, for a wait, day. Wow. This cup of soup. So if you read the labels, now you'll be able to manage. So Lisey asked another interesting question. Well, if I can't have salt, then what can I have? Yeah. So once you've kind of gotten control of the food that you're taking in, what about the food that you're preparing? Mm -hmm. You can use like natural spices and herbs to bring out flavor. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. think garlic, mm -hmm. lemon juice, cumin, fresh ground pepper. Mm -hmm. Those are things that can give you some flavor mm -hmm. um, without adding the sodium. And then last but not least, I want, want you to be mindful. Some of the salt alternatives contain potassium. Potassium can also be dangerous for some people if it's taken in in excess, too. Oh, wow. Really? So you gotta watch out for all of it. That's thank right. you so much, Dr. Frieda, for thank stopping you. by. We thank needed you. this information. Really did. Make sure to visit Dr. Frieda's website, gethealthystayhealthy.com. It's a great resource. And for more information, please head on over to therealcom. We'll be right back. This is the real.